You know her as an actress. Now hear Ashley Judd speak out on her biggest role yet. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. I think America breathed a sigh of relief when this uh, stalemate was over on Friday night. And even though the politicians just avoided a shutdown, Washington is already gearing up for the next round in the fight over government spending. This one's going to be a biggie. Well, Charlene Israel has this look at what's ahead and some of the winners and losers in last week's battle over the budget. So who won on the political side? On the cuts, the nearly $39 billion, Republicans win. Just a few months ago, Democrats called such levels of cuts draconian. Uh, we've had to bring this president kicking and screaming to the table to cut spending. But on the so-called riders to cut funding to Planned Parenthood and NPR, the Democrats win by beating back that effort. House Republicans needed to pick a fight, and I think... I think John Boehner fought the good fight. I think he drove a hard bargain here. I, I, I want to see the details, but uh, from what I know, it, it sounds like John Boehner got a good deal. Probably not good enough for me to support it, but you a good deal nonetheless. It. In a they speech Wednesday night, well, the president will sure lay out his plans to slash the deficit, including tax hikes and cuts to Medicare and Medicaid spending. But his top advisor says the cuts can't hurt the economic recovery. I think if they're not careful cuts, yes, it could. And that's what the president said, listen, we can't take a machete. We have to take a scalpel. And we're going to have to cut. So we're going to have to look carefully. Meanwhile, the U.S. is about to hit the legal ceiling for our national debt, $14.3 trillion. And Congress must decide whether to raise that ceiling. I think there will be um, some kind of negotiations. And yes, it probably will go up to some sort of a deadline. The debt ceiling deadline is a moving deadline. It's not a date certain deadline like the government shutdown. Our strategy is not to default. Our strategy is to get spending under control. If not, the country could face dire consequences. Default by the United States would precipitate a crisis worse than the one we just went through. The implications of that for our financial system, for our fiscal policy, for our economy would be uh, catastrophic. The final vote on this year's budget will come in just a few days, but negotiations for the coming year are expected to be even tougher because the stakes will be much higher. Charlene Israel, CBN News. Thanks, Charlene. David Brody is with us. He's our uh, D.C. political correspondent. David, it looks like John Boehner came out of here as a real champion. He, he stood taller than any of us thought he could do. Well, I think so, Pat. I mean, if you think about it, uh, Boehner wanted about $30 billion in cuts. Uh, he got $40 billion. And, and, and look, I, I think for Boehner and the Republicans, this is about making sure that they can actually govern to a degree of what they have up here, which is just the House. But he was able to say, look, we're not going to shut down the government. And that is going to be a winning message to independents for sure. And at the same time, like we talked about, he was able to cut spending. And so you, he kind of did the daily double up here, Pat. And, you know, not everybody's happy. But when is anybody happy up here, Pat? Not everybody is. <laughs> well, this is just the prelim. The big one is yet to come. What are you hearing? Yeah, I mean, this, this was just Act 1, Pat, just Act 1. Act 2 is coming. That's the raising of uh, uh, the debt ceiling, uh, which should happen sometime before July, sometime before early July. And then, of course, the 2012 budget. And so let's just remember here that John Boehner is telling the House Republicans, look, you got your $40 billion. Now we move on to the debt ceiling. We get some more from President Obama. Because remember, President Obama wants to raise the debt ceiling, and he wants John Boehner to give him a clean bill. In other words, nothing attached, just raise the debt ceiling. John Boehner says, quote, not a chance, Mr. President. And so there is going to be something along with that debt ceiling, whether it be a potential balanced budget amendment, or there'll be cuts, more cuts to spending, a lot more cuts to spending. And then, of course, the 2012 budget, where Paul Ryan's budget comes out with $6 trillion in cuts to spending. I mean, so uh, this is just uh, the beginning, Pat. As a matter of fact, the debt ceiling up here, the fight over the debt ceiling is being called Armageddon, and it hasn't even started yet. Well, David, you know, as, as Boehner said, uh, we were talking about billions now. We're going to be talking about trillions because Paul Ryan, uh, I think it's $6 trillion he's cutting, and this is a pretty substantial uh, budget he's proposing. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and this is part of the tricky part for Republicans, uh, not so much Paul Ryan, but more the GOP in general, because this budget calls for basically privatizing to a degree Medicare and block grants for Medicaid. And so, of course, the Democrats will trot out their line that the Republicans want to cut 
programs and spending for poor people in America. And so these are the battle lines. Now, the president, of course, is going to have, as Charlene mentioned, uh, a speech this week on entitlement reform on Wednesday. And so the president, and Pat, we've seen this before, it's the word triangulation because he's doing what Bill Clinton did, which is the president's going to say, we need to cut spending. I'm going to look at entitlement spending. And so he's going to try to position himself in the middle while Paul Ryan and the GOP is on the right with their six trillion. And the liberal Democrats, Barney Frank and, and company, are on the left. And the president will say, look, I'm taking the reasoned approach, the small but steady hand. That's the line from the White House. Harry Reid uh, was pointing in all that debate. He got rather extreme in some of the stuff he said, but this is the Tea Party trying to take away, you know, benefits from grandmother and all that. Um, what do you think? Is the Tea Party playing a major role in, in what's coming? Oh, there's no doubt. They're driving the conversation. I mean, let's remember, President Obama, when he first released his fiscal 2011 budget, the one we're talking about right now, now where this deal supposedly is struck, he wanted $40 billion in increases. Now, it's actually a $40 billion in cuts that we're talking about. So the Tea Party has fundamentally changed the conversation about should we cut spending or increase spending to how much are we going to cut. There's no doubt that train has left the station. And so this is now a challenge for the Democrats to figure out how they're going to maneuver uh, in the future. David Brody, thank you so much. We look forward to hearing more from you. Uh, Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN newsroom. Lee. Pat, another strong aftershock rattled northeast Japan today, the second major aftershock in less than a week, and it sparked a tsunami warning for the already crippled coast. But thankfully, a big wave never formed. There are no reports of damage or injuries at this point. The aftershock comes exactly one month, though, after the devastating magnitude 9 earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan, killing at least 25,000 people and creating the largest nuclear crisis in years. Pat? You know, uh, my heart uh, feels for those Japanese people in this crisis. You remember that devastating earthquake that hit Haiti? It was a .7 or 7 uh, I think this aftershock was something like 7 uh, had in Japan. There several aftershocks that have been over a 7. Yeah. The other day they had two back to back. They yeah. were 7. I mean, or it sits like on an earthquake fault, and they have as many as 1,400. Uh, little minor tremors a year over there. It's just one of those things that Japan is very unstable and it's uh, the, the, the uh, so it's terrible. Well, Operation Blessing is, is trying to help the people as best we can and uh, Lee Webb has a report on that. That's right, Pat. Operation Blessing sponsored an eye clinic for people who lost their glasses in this disaster and it provided bicycles for children. Everyone was crying with tears of joy, and they're amazed that people have come all the way from America to do these acts of compassion for the Japanese people. And uh, it's just a joy to be able to demonstrate uh, Christian compassion in a place like Japan. And it, it's just, it's a wonderful experience. We're helping to eliminate or alleviate at least some of the suffering. The Operation Blessing is often a spark that lights a fire of hope in the hearts of those that are afflicted by these disasters. A spark that lights a fire of hope. Operation Blessing also sending 20 diesel generators to fishermen and their families living on islands off the coast of Japan. And to learn more about what Operation Blessing is doing, you can see the complete interview with Bill Horn at CBNNews.com. Israel and Hamas have agreed to a ceasefire for now. It appears Israel's military response to terrorist attacks by Hamas was enough to stop the violence. Chris Mitchell has that story now from Jerusalem. Hamas and other terrorist groups launched more than 120 rockets and mortars into Israel since last Thursday, before Israel and Hamas agreed to a tentative ceasefire. Israel stepped up airstrikes against terrorist targets in Gaza after an anti-tank missile was fired at an Israeli school bus driving near Gaza last week, critically injuring a teenage boy. According to reports, 19 Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists and two civilians were killed in Israeli strikes. Hamas apparently agreed to the ceasefire because of Israel's tough response and the success of its Iron Dome anti-rocket system. The Iron Dome's debut on the battlefield was incredibly successful, intercepting 100% of the longer range Grad rockets launched at larger Israeli cities. This is a, a great technological achievement. It's the first time that 
these types of missiles have been intercepted by Israeli technology. Prime Minister Netanyahu praised the engineers and soldiers operating the system, but warned it couldn't protect everyone. We're in the first stage, but we went out in a sprint. We'll still have developments of this system, but we can't cover every house, every citizen, every site in Israel. Still, many civilians were encouraged by the success. Before, it was scarier. You heard a siren, you needed to jump into the shelters. Now, you hear it, you stop and look up, it explodes, and that's it. For now, it's quiet, but both sides, no doubt, are preparing for the next round. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Pat, there's no question that this Israeli leadership has strong resolve, but it also has technology on its side. It's extraordinary. We have struggled in the United States to find something that an anti-missile defense, and we have not been successful in doing anything like this Iron Dome. This is marvelous because, you know, I was there in the middle of that last war they had, and it, it, Israel is so vulnerable to strikes from Hezbollah. Now they've got something to defend themselves, and once the word gets out to those uh, terrorists, they'll realize that, that they're going to be on the receiving end of a lot of uh, firepower, but they're not going to be able to dish it out with impunity. And uh, so I congratulate the Israelis. Well, something else we've been talking about in this program is the rising price of crude oil. I think it's going up considerably higher. And I said Sheikh Yamani, the former oil ministry of Saudi Arabia, has said if any disruption takes place in the Gulf, it could go to $300. Well, it's edging up to $120 a barrel, and uh, Lee has that story. That's right, Pat. Oil prices continue to climb now at $112 a barrel, and some analysts looking for it to hit $150 a barrel in the next few months. The rise is being felt at the pump. The average price for a gallon of gas, $3.76. Experts say it could go to $4 soon and maybe even 5 down the road. Gold and silver are also setting record highs. An ounce of gold hit $1,476 and silver went over $41 an ounce, a 31-year high. Pat? You know, I, I mentioned, Lee, we in the United States need an energy policy. We don't have one. The administration is incapable because of all these interest groups, these radical interest groups have all got their little agendas, and they're not thinking about the good of America. We need to go to some alternate to oil, and the best alternate I know of is natural gas. Natural gas has been selling around $4,000 a thousand, which is very cheap. And um, it's cheaper than coal. It doesn't uh, put out much uh, uh, in the way of uh, noxious fumes and ring, uh, greenhouse gases and all this other. And uh, we have huge amounts of oil if we just will get on it. We have shale beds all over the West. We have shale in, in Pennsylvania. We have shale down in Texas and Louisiana and up in Arkansas. We've got all kinds of, and, and in the shale is enormous, trillions and trillions and trillions of cubic feet of gas. We can convert our automobiles to burn on natural gas, and we have the means of getting free from the Arab oil uh, cartel. But so far, nobody's making a move on it. And all they do is debate and argue back and forth about this little thing and that little thing. America is in a crisis. And when you start having to pay five, six, seven, eight, ten dollars a, a gallon for gasoline, there's going to be a huge cry. And I'm afraid, once again, they're going to make the wrong decision, like tapping the petroleum reserve, like that's the answer. It's not. Lee? A massive asteroid will fly by Earth on November 8th, just a few months from now. Experts say this is the closest Earth approach an asteroid this size has made since 1976. The asteroid is 1,300 feet in diameter. It will be too close to the sun to be observed at first, but scientists are saying that it could be visible by later in the day. The asteroid will pass within the orbit of the moon around 200,000 miles from Earth. Fascinating, Pat. Yeah, it is. Well, we, Fascinating we, enough to write a book about. <laughs> I wrote a book. You know, really, Lee, if you read the Bible, uh, it seems like to me the only thing that will fulfill the words of Jesus and the, and the words of Revelation uh, would be a, a, an asteroid hitting the, United the, the, the earth, and it's going to happen. And uh, the Bible says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, and he, he, he had what looked like a burning mountain, and he hurled it into the sea. What better description of an asteroid? Yeah.
a burning the, the, mountain. The implications of that are almost My hard book, to describe. The end of the age, it had one that was one kilometer uh, in uh, diameter, I guess it was, uh, but it, it weighed three billion pounds. And the, I, I did the science on it and had to re research, and the effect is enormous. Yeah. Well, and once it hits the Earth's crust, all kinds of bad things happen because volcanoes begin to explode and tsunamis take mm -hmm. place, and uh, devastation follows in their wake. So for everybody, it's. Yeah. But uh, this is you read the Bible, read it carefully, and that's what it says is going to happen. And uh, Jesus said, except those days were shortened, there will be no flesh remaining. There won't be anybody alive on the earth. Uh, so this is one of the, they've got something they call the extinctor, which is enough to wipe out everybody. And, you know, it's, it wouldn't take much. One of them hit, apparently wiped out the dinosaurs. Well, you know, I think one of the things that we've seen in the last few years with all of the natural disasters mm. that have happened is just how fragile we are on earth. You know, well, it doesn't take much to upset I know this, we're doing news now, but you need to put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. It's time we put our hands in, in his hand because in terms of disaster, he's the only one that can really take us through. Nobody else, nothing, no power on earth can do it. Terry? Well, they call him a giant slayer, and he's taken the Senate by storm. I don't think that people of faith ought to shrink away from being in the public arena. Meet South Dakota's John Thune, that's next. Plus, actress Ashley Judd joins us live, so don't go away. Got a question for Pat? Send us yours now on CBN.com. We'll bring it online with your questions from our live chat room later on today's 700 Club. Do you have money to burn? If not, you need to know that the paper dollars you're invested your life savings in are being consumed right now in a growing blaze of inflation and declining value. Economists know why the dollar is burning and at risk of crashing. It's because politicians and central bankers keep printing them. And this makes the dollars you've worked so hard for worth less and less. The politicians and bankers hated the gold standard because it forced them to be honest. That's why the U.S. dollar keeps losing value and could soon crash. The good news is that you can create your own personal gold standard and keep your savings protected when the dollar crashes. Call or visit online now. Find out more about the best performing assets of the 21st century from the best company in the country, Swiss America. Tomorrow, we play our trump card. I'm very truthful. May not be politically correct, but it is truthful. David Brody sits down with the Donald to ask him about his possible run for president. If I wasn't serious, I wouldn't be sitting with you, to be honest with you. And his message to evangelicals. I think that they want to get somebody in that's going to win, and perhaps they look at me as somebody that can win. On tomorrow's 700 Club. Well, we thought he might be the great hope for the Republican Party for the presidency, but after a few trial balloons were floated, he shot them down and said, no, I'm staying in the Senate. Uh, but he's one of the Washington's brightest Republican stars, and he said, no, I'm staying here, not going for the White House. And so he can make a greater impact in the Senate. David Brody recently spent an afternoon with South Dakota Senator John Thune to find out the reasons behind that decision. And one more. John Thune has what a lot of people want in a presidential candidate. Thanks a lot. But his sights aren't on the White House, at least for now. This small town guy from Murdo, South Dakota, is very comfortable exerting his Christian influence as a United States Senator. I have a Christian worldview, uh, and so it shapes the way that I, that I view issues. And I don't apologize for that. And I don't think that people of faith ought to um, shrink away from being in the public arena. Thune doesn't shrink away from a fight. 
He's the fourth ranking Republican senator and as chairman of the Senate Republican Policy Committee, he's responsible for coordinating GOP legislation. Hey, Barry, how are you? How are you? See you, man. Pleasure to see yeah. you. Welcome back. CBN News oh, followed Thune recently yeah. during meetings on the Hill, like this one, where he's talking about budget negotiations with members of the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. Thune's day moves fast, moving from budget meetings to hearings about entitlement reform. Why isn't there any attempt to deal with these long-term problems? Then, after quickly meeting the press to push the GOP message of the day, he's back at his office meeting with constituents concerned about the health care law. Sometimes Thune's day doesn't end until he makes the rounds at cocktail parties, combining small talk and pushing GOP policy. But ultimately for Thune, the battle isn't about Republicans versus Democrats. He says it's about the country's future. Thune questions President Obama's leadership as he points out the administration's upcoming budget does not tackle the hard issues of entitlement reform. When you're the president of the United States and you know that the biggest issue facing you is this cliff that we're about ready to head over if we don't get the spending and debt situation under control, it's very irresponsible not to, to take the action that's necessary to fix the problem. The Tea Party wants Thune and Republicans to fix the problem, but Thune says it's going to take some time. As much as we're going to push the envelope as far as we can, uh, we're probably not going to get everything they want accomplished, accomplished in these next two years, particularly with a Democrat president and a Democrat Senate, that there are limitations to what we're able, going to be able to accomplish and to keep expectations realistic. So what can voters expect from Thune? Well, his legislative track record includes a 100 percent rating last year from the American Conservative Union. He's also taken a lead role in crafting energy and budget legislation. And on the pro-family side, he's voted to prohibit late-term abortions, stop research on embryos, and supported a federal marriage amendment. Thune's philosophy is that while our country is in a fiscal mess, that doesn't mean social issues should be on the back burner. I think most social conservatives agree that we want a government that's smaller, a government that's more responsive and accountable and all that, but, um, but we also need to recognize that there are important uh, issues that impact the, the basic glue, the foundation that holds our culture together, and that comes down to the family union, and we can't, we can't ignore those. Thune has a lot on his plate, but he's shown a tough, gritty side as well. In 2004, he became a Republican giant slayer when he beat Tom Daschle, the sitting Democrat majority leader. And while Thune won't be taking on another giant in 2012, maybe the former high school and college basketball star with the good looks and money jump shot could settle things on the court with the president. What do you think? Could you, could you take Obama one-on-one? -on -one? I, think, <laughs> I think you could, I mean, you got the height advantage to a degree. Do this you is not? true. This is true. That's right. And, um, and I don't know if he has game or not. I'm waiting for my invitation to the White House to play, but I, I don't expect it's <laughs> going to come anytime soon. But that, yeah, I think that would be a good way to settle a lot of these big issues. We'll just play one-on-one -on -one and, uh, you know, winner gets to choose uh, how, we, how we do uh, entitlement reform and tax reform. And Ooh, there's a lot riding on that game. Yeah, that, that would be. That would be an interesting way to, to fix it. For now, Thune's holding court in the United States Senate, and he's got game. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Well, I think many people were sad when he decided not to do it, but he's a very wise guy. You know, the thing about South Dakota, I found those people are so pretty. Uh, really? <laughs> They're Scandinavians. They all are cool. Is that what it is? You're Norwegian. <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, seriously, you go around that state, I mean, all these, these handsome guys, beautiful women, and John Thune's wife's very lovely, and they're both evangelical Christians, lovely people. Mm -hmm. And I was so thrilled to see him beat Tom Daschle. We were so disgusted with, with the way he held up nominees to the various courts that I think the nation wanted him out, and so Thune had a, you know, a landslide of support uh, to, to beat Daschle. Well, I hope his decision to stay in the Senate is a good one, but he will be missed well, on the well, national really, scene, I, I think. I mean, he would, uh, he would have, I think, had the nomination of the Republican Party going away, but, I, I, I you know, he knows what's best, and so we salute him, so he's a good man. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up, it's the second biggest crime in the world behind drug trafficking and one of the fastest growing. See what it is and what's being done to stop it. Up next, you know her as an actress. Now hear Ashley Judd speak out on her biggest role yet. Do you take fish oil? 
there's an omega-3 supplement that's better than regular fish oil. Staying healthy, it's not easy. I exercise regularly and eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I used to take a fish oil supplement too, but then I discovered something better than regular fish oil. Arctic Wonder Omega-3 Krill Oil. It's from the makers of One-A-Day, so I know I can trust it. The Omega-3s in Arctic Wonder both support heart health and are scientifically proven to be better absorbed than regular fish oil. You'd have to take six of these fish oil soft gels to get the strength of just two Arctic Wonder soft gels. The Arctic Wonder does not have an aftertaste. They go down real easy. Arctic Wonder isn't just good for your heart. It also supports healthy brain function and a healthy immune system. This is one of the products that I plan to take for the rest of my life. Arctic Wonder is from One-A-Day and not available in stores. For a special trial offer, call or go online now. Call 1-800-409-7339. That's 1-800-409-7339. Or go online to tryarcticwonder.com now. To see this week's most viewed stories, go to cbn.com. Well, for years, Ashley Judd has graced the silver screen in films such as Double Jeopardy and Heat. But recently, her role as an actress has been dwarfed by her role as a humanitarian. She's traveled around the world as part of what she calls her true calling, speaking out against the modern-day slavery. Every year, millions of men, women, and children become victims of human trafficking. 80% of these people are women, and up to 50% of them are minors. Here's one woman's story from South Africa. He raped me. I was 15. I called my mother to say I want to come home, and I'm pregnant. My mother said I must stay away. I must never come back. The more vulnerable you are, in your home situation, the more vulnerable you'll be in this exploitation. You get tricked, you get transported, you get trapped, and eventually you get used. Seeing the pimps around there, they're like enslaved, really enslaved. They don't have a choice. If you don't want to go, they'll beat you well, well. And you still have to go out after they beat you. And then this man going to kill me. He won't let me get out. You can be pregnant, you have a child of him, you still go back to the street. These guys are the toughest criminals around and they know exactly what they're doing and they know exactly how to make you as dependent as possible. 95% it will be with drugs. The other one is a very complicated drug. You must smoke it so it doesn't give you time to think about anything important in your life. So most of the Prostitute, I would say 90% is actually being tricked or trafficked in some kind. So they're really in slavery. You're being transported and often to a place where you don't even speak the language, you can't even ask for help. Then they say those girls, they may be from Joburg, then they take you to Bloemfontein. Or they say they're from Joburg, then they take you to Pretoria. These kids are being raped that they are being abused day and night. If I bring the cops there, they will kill me personally. Never you can talk. And this is somebody else's daughter, somebody else's child. That person had dreams, hoping that my, my child will be an artist one day. My child will be a doctor. A social worker. It was my dream. Meanwhile, your child is a prostitute on the street, and so her life has been destroyed. It has been stolen away from her. The money that they make, they give to their pimps. And they get beaten every day. They get abused by the pimps. They get abused by the police. And they get abused by the clients. So I have sex with him and he takes his money back. He put a gun against my head. Sometimes guys pick them up and there's like six, six or eight boys waiting. And they rape her and some of the girls get even pointed with knives. I can't handle it again. I had enough. And they're just living for survival. They've lost hope in life. They're outcast, they're rejected. I know when they have an encounter with Jesus, their life will never be the same. It's only by the grace of God that we can totally set them free. This is the worst that can happen to a person. Human beings should not ever be for sale. I just want to leave this life. I don't want to go on. Actress Ashley Judd has traveled across the globe to raise awareness on human trafficking. 
She's spoken with victims of sexual slavery, and she's seen firsthand the damage it causes. And she's written about it in her new memoir. It's called All That Is Bitter and Sweet. Ashley, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Good morning. You have seen the consequences of human trafficking up close and personally. How bad is it? Well, I am appreciative of the way you introduced the topic. It is, in fact, the largest, second largest industry in the world. And what Americans may not realize is that the slave trade right now is far greater than it ever was at its very height in the 19th century. And I appreciate your focus on sex slavery, but labor slavery is a huge problem both domestically and worldwide as well. And by the time we're done today, I hope that we'll give Americans some really good awareness about the difficulty of sex and labor slavery in this country and some resources that they personally can access to become modern day abolitionists. How can this happen to people, Ashley? I know that, that it happens in different ways in different countries. What are, what are some of the things that actually force people into sexual slavery specifically? Well, it is an issue of both supply and demand. Demand really drives it though. There are men who want to buy sex. They want coerced, forced, prostituted sex with children and adults, girls, boys, men, and women. And I really think that Christians in particular have an extraordinary moral responsibility to place the focus on demand and abolish demand and say it is not okay to buy sex off anyone. On the supply side, it's really poverty, disempowerment, and gender inequality that place girls and women in particular in a position of forced prostitution. Sometimes there's something called the choiceless choice. I've met a lot of women in the 13 countries in the global south to which I've traveled, spending a lot of time in brothels and slums and forcibly displaced persons camps and makeshift schools and clinics that in this country would actually be condemned buildings and in hospices, literally holding people who are dying from preventable diseases that they've contracted during slavery. And the choiceless choice is a mother who has had more children than she can possibly feed, who's unable to prevent you know, diseases that she contracts with a mosquito bite such as malaria. And in order to survive and feed herself, she may be forced into economic prostitution. And so there are, a lot of, there are a lot of points of insertion where we can disrupt this cycle of poverty and violence, economic empowerment of girls and women, making sure that girls in particular have access to education, uh, improvements to public health, and as I said, demand abolition making it not okay for anyone, anywhere, anytime to buy sex. You know, we mentioned in the piece that we showed just before I introduced you that very often the very people in government that you think would be helping some of these women and some of these children are in fact a part of the problem. On one of your trips, you went to Thailand. You actually sat down and spent time with six prostitutes there. Tell us about what you learned from them, what they had to say, what it spoke to you about. Well, there's been a really good recent study conducted by a woman named Melissa Farley. It's a multi-country study of women in forced prostitution, and well over 90% said that their most urgent need was to get out of prostitution. And the ad average age of entry into prostitution in this country is between 12 and 14, and the overwhelming majority of all prostitutes have been sexually abused in childhood often through incest. So it is those abuses of authority and position that set girls and women up to be forced into prostitution. That is true whether it's in Thailand or in the United States of America. And a lot of times it's that economic asymmetry where this person has the economic power and this person, the girl or woman, does not. And it's that abuse of power that perpetuates sex and labor slavery. You, t you talk about, in the book, you talk about going to Goma in the Congo. And, you know, there women are being abused terribly, maybe more horribly than any place I've ever, ever heard of in the world. And it, it has to do with politics. Talk about that. 
It does. It has to do with politics, and it also has to do with North American consumption patterns. I am, you know, I use the word sort of jokingly, but hey, there's a little grain of truth in it. I'm a kind of addicted to my electronics, to my computer and my iPhone. And the things inside of my electronics that make it light up, that make it beep, um, that allow it to, you know, show me what I'm typing on the screen are called the three T's. They are minerals that are found in vast abundance in the Democratic Co uh, Republic of Congo, tin, tantalum, and tungsten. And every time I buy one of those products, I am contributing to conflict mineral mining in Congo. And what the, the armed militias are doing who want to access that vast mineral wealth is raping girls and women in particular. They are using gender violence to create instability, to literally clear villages and villagers off the land so they may have unimpeded access to that mineral wealth. And, you know, they say Congo is the worst place in the world to be a woman, and it's gallows humor, but I say, gee, I didn't know there was a place worse than Yemen. Well, guess what? Congo is worse. And I was just thinking this morning about four beautiful teenage girls with whom I spent a lot of time, their names, because the Bible is so clear about, you know, we have to name them. You know, people are people, um, particularly when we give them the dignity of their name. And their names are Solange, Kavira, Patience, Kika, and Stuka. And all four of these girls are already survivors of multiple gang rapes by armed militia. Some of them had conceived by their rapists, and they all had severe internal injuries, both because their pelvises were not adequately, adequately formed yet, they are very young, they're not prepared to bear children, and through what I call insertion rape. They have internal injuries from things like bayonets and sticks. And we can be a part of the solution in this country by demanding that companies, our electronics providers, certify that they have obtained the minerals in our favorite electronics without engaging in conflict mining. So folks can go to Hope for Congo and sign a petition. There was some progress made in the last big financial reform package that was passed last summer. This process is very similar to the Blood Diamond certification. Now every company listed on the American Stock Exchange must trace and audit its mineral sources. It's required that they tell us as Americans where the minerals have come from. The final step is the certification so that you and I can make a moral choice when we buy our electronics and choose the products that are conflict free. I don't want to contribute to the rape of more girls like Kavira, Patience, Stuka, Kika, and Solange. And I know that Christians don't, other Christians don't either. You say in your book that you have a sensitivity to sexual exploitation of any kind because of your own abuse as a child. Tell us about that. And I also should add, you know, I have a sensitivity to it because I just breathe the air of humanity. But definitely, um, I was, I am a survivor of childhood sexual abuse and rape. And by the grace of God and doing a lot of hard work in my recovery, I can say today that I have no shame. I have given the shame back to the perpetrators. It was never mine to begin with. But I had to get into good recovery to learn that because a perpetrator is shameless when they sexually aggress. And in that act of sexual aggression, they put the shame that should have been theirs onto the vulnerable, defenseless child. And we have to get into good recovery and group up with other survivors of traumatic sexual experiences to learn how to give that shame back. And one of the reasons, another reason I should say, in addition to the fact that today I can say I'm a survivor and have no shame, that it's important to me to talk about it because every 45 seconds in this country, a girl or woman is sexually aggressed upon. It's very common. Three American women will die today at the hands of their intimate partners. We have a gender violence problem in this country as well as a responsibility morally to do what we can to stop gender violence worldwide. Well, your book is incredibly well written. I want to mention again that it's called All That Is Bitter and Sweet. It's available in bookstores around the country. Ashley, thank you so much for being with us. You know, she also says that our pa painful past has become our greatest asset. And if we will give God that pain, there is recovery on the other side of it. But we do need to take an active role in stopping everything we can where people are being inappropriately treated 
in this kind of way. Ashley Judd, thank you so much for being with us and for your book. Thanks so much mm -hmm. for having me. Pat? Fantastic. She's a terrific actress, by the way. Her movies have been stunning. And uh, to think of this crusade, she's very articulate about what she's talking about. Well, still ahead, we're in our chat room and getting ready to bring it on. Your questions are next, so don't go away. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct Buy Club has already awarded over a million dollars, and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local Direct Buy Club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items. Like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? I was in a lot of pain. I remember feeling, I don't want to have cancer. Why is this happening? I went to pray with my 10-year-old. He said that he wished he had two hearts because one of them was breaking. I had to reassure her a lot that I'm going to be okay. Things are going to be all right. You know, God's on our side. This is one thing that Cancer Treatment Center does for people. They give them the courage and the strength to battle cancer. When you first walk in that building, you almost feel like there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is about the patient. It is only about the patient. And what is it that they need and what do they want? Call now and we'll send you this free DVD that shows you how our very special team of experts and caregivers put you at the center of everything we do. Hope is alive at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I don't really see how anyone can get through a life-threatening disease without the Lord in their life. He gives us the strength that we need to carry on. Welcome back to the 700 Club. The film Soul Surfer had an impressive debut at the box office this weekend, finishing number four with an estimated gross of $11.1 million. Soul Surfer tells the story of Bethany Hamilton, a Christian surfer who lost her arm in a shark attack at the age of 13. But she came back to become one of the top competitors in the world. CBN programming is reaching more than 37 million people in India. A recent survey shows that last year alone, 1.4 million people became Christians after being inspired by a CBN program in that country. And more than 8 million people joined churches. CBN World Reach programs have been on the air in India since 1995. CBN Studios there produce programs in four languages. Some of the most popular include the Hindi 700 Club and a children's program called Happy World. And you can find out more about CBN World Reach by logging on to CBN.com slash World Reach. Pat and Terry will be back with more after this. Dear Bowflex, I dropped eight dress sizes, 36 pounds, and all I had to do was walk. This is the Bowflex Tread Climber Machine, the easiest way to walk and burn up to twice the calories in less time. By combining the motion of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical, you get the calorie burning benefits of all three workouts at once. I lost 30 pounds in four months. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Call now for your free DVD and information kit. You'll see how the Tread Climber burns up to twice the calories of a treadmill. Plus, you'll learn how you can own a Tread Climber machine today with special financing for 18 months. Within the first couple of weeks, I started to lose inches. I lost 50 pounds in three months using the Tread Climber. Call or go online to buytc.com for your free info kit. We'll also send you the Bowflex Insider's Guide with a personal fitness assessment to help you jumpstart your Bowflex body today, absolutely free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bowflex. Sincerely, J.D. Weber. Tomorrow, we play our trump card. I'm very truthful. May not be politically correct, but it is truthful. David Brody sits down with the Donald to ask him about his possible run for president. If I wasn't serious, I wouldn't be sitting with you, to be honest with you. And his message to evangelicals. 
I think that they want to get somebody in that's going to win, and perhaps they look at me as somebody that can win. On tomorrow's 700 Club. Well, before we take some questions, as a uh, fledgling golfer, I've been playing the game for some time. Uh, the Masters was probably one of oh the most extraordinary word. golf events, I think, in history. I've never seen anything like it. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, I mean, yesterday was just, you, you couldn't tell the players without a yeah. scorecard, literally. Well, I mean, you've got four or five of them I mean, the, you know, winning, you know, all of them with 10 under and uh, it, Tiger Woods making a run, and then Rory McIlroy, the poor kid, he he led the whole time, and then he hits one bad drive oh. up in somebody's yard, and from then on out he blew up, and I mean it was it was a shame, but uh, uh, and then this uh, Charles Schwartzman, I think it is Schwartzman, mm -hmm. Schwartzman from South Africa, comes in with a. 14 under. I mean, he just came. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, if Augusta doesn't make you want to golf, <laughs> yeah. nothing will. Well, it's, so it's so gorgeous beautiful. down oh, there. My oh, word. my word. And, and, but anyhow, that, that's the best uh, publicity the golf game could possibly <laughs> have. And when it's as exciting as that, uh, anyhow, it our, wasn't exciting congratulations. Day. To South you Africa, have, yeah. You have an Australian, a couple of Australians in the hunt. You've got, uh, you know, uh, a South Africa wins it. I mean, that's something. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, okay. That's great. So much for sports. We've got some chat room questions for you. You ready? All right. This is Larry who says, why are you advocating cuts in Social Security? Seniors depend on that income to exist. Uh, Larry, I am not advocating cuts in Social Security. What I am advocating is that the age of eligibility of Social Security be made to correspond to reality. When it was first put in, the people died by the time they reached 65. And so people began to get Social Security after 65. Now it's 67, but people are living to be 80. And so we need to raise the, uh, the eligibility uh, limit. And also there's some thought of means testing. But uh, I'm not talking about cutting Social Security. But what we, I do think is important because the program is going broke. I, I do think we should privatize. We should allow younger workers to begin to invest the money that they put into Social Security into something that will earn more than the Social Security fund. But it's going bankrupt. That's why I'm advocating some changes. And it's got to be done. Mm -hmm. This is a question from someone that doesn't want their name mentioned. They said, she says, I had an affair with my pastor for five years. He has since retired and we have stopped our affair. But I still am having trouble dealing with it. I want others to know what he did. Uh, no. Uh, you did what you did wrong. You take it to the Lord. You get comfort from God. And uh, the pastor is going to have to deal with his transgression. He did something that was wrong. You say he's retired? Mm -hmm. well, I mean, who do you want to tell? I mean, is he out of the game now? I mean, you know, what do you want to do? Are you looking for revenge? I, I, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Yeah, there's no freedom in that, really. No. Forgive him. Ask God to deal with him. You ask God to deal with you. Ask God's forgiveness and then get on with your life, all right? This is Sylvia who says, my husband married me while being married to someone else and I was not aware of this. He's now divorced from the other woman, but I feel guilty. What should I do? Uh, you feel guilty because he was, essentially you were engaged in a bigamous affair. That's bigamy. Right, well, exactly. He married, married two me. women at the same time. Mm -hmm. I don't think your, your marriage is valid and I think you might want to go back to square one and start all over again, but uh, I, I don't think that you should continue as it is now. I mean, the, I, I don't think the second marriage was valid if he was married yeah, to somebody I, I, I can't figure that out without knowing the details. She says he's divorced from the other woman now, so he must have divorced her after he'd married this yeah, woman. Yeah, he was already married. He gets married to her, so he's now married to two people. It's a bigamous relationship, so it's not valid. Mm -hmm. So, and you feel guilty, you should. So you need to go back, as I say, and start all over again with him. And if you feel that's of the Lord, then mm -hmm. get on with it. Okay? This is from Kauai. This person says, how should Christians deal with depression? I try to speak life and pray for joy, but it's so hard. Is there something wrong with me? Uh, a lot of depression is called by, by chemical problems. And uh, uh, you, you need maybe to, to find an antidepressant. There are some that are, that are uh, good that won't hurt you. 
The other thing that is so important, you need serotonin, and serotonin comes from sunlight. You need to get out in the sun. You need to walk. You need to run. You need to exercise. You need to eat healthy food and get out with other people. But if you stay in a dark room, you're going to get worse. But it may be that the time comes you need to see a doctor and mm -hmm. see if maybe there isn't some uh, at least temporary uh, antidepressant that you can take. Sometimes think, they can give you just a little bit of something and it makes a huge exactly. difference. Exactly. And know? so I'm, 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 I'm not in favor of people getting hooked on drugs all the time, but some, yeah. the depression, clinical depression is a very yes. serious thing. Well, that's all the time all we right. have for questions for today. Thank you for submitting those. Up next, the CEO makes the toughest decision of his life. Find out what it is he chose next. Come on and cross over to the all-new Cross Country Radio from CBN. Can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. When he was younger, Stanford graduate Ken Eldred had to make a choice. He could either go into the ministry or he could go into business. Ken struggled with this dilemma for some time, and he came up with a solution to both. And it's a pleasure to welcome to the 700 Club back a dear friend who's written a superb book called The Integrated Life. Ken, good to have you with us, my friend. Thank you. Good to be here, Pat. Nice to um, see you. You started a company that at one time I think had a market cap of about forty billion dollars. So you 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 can speak with authority to business people. I did indeed. Yeah, Ariba Technologies. Yeah, it was very. It was the darling of Wall Street for during the late nineties. What do young people need to know? You you think this book ought to go to young people? What do they need to know that they're not being told? When I started in in business, I really had no understanding of what that God had even an interest in the business world. Mm -hmm. I thought church was about God and business was about business. But indeed, what I learned is that God wants to put these two things together, that He is the Lord of all. Right. And as Lord of all, He wants us to live a single and integrated life, which means instead of looking at balance versus uh, you know, priorities. It's all priorities within God's plan for our lives. A lot of people think they're they, they in business. They've got to cheat and, and, and they go to church on Sunday. Then the rest of the week, it's, 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 you know, the jungle. That's the wonderful thing about God. When we put him first in our business lives, he really wants to, uh, to help us succeed. Yeah. And he wants us to have success in our lives because he wants us to have those miracles. Mm -hmm. And when he wants us to have miracles, because then we can stand up and, and testify to the greatness of our God. Amen. Well, people, you know, they, they love to throw at you, well, the, the money's the root of all evil, but the, the, the Bible doesn't say that, does it? it, it no, it does not. The, 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 I, the Bible says that, uh, that the love of money is the root of all evil. Right. You know, when we look at money, it shouldn't be an issue about profit or nonprofit. And the church has a problem with the idea of profit. But actually, nonprofit and profit is not a church concept, it's an IRS concept. 
<laughs> we shouldn't let the IRS control our lives. <laughs> what are you trying to tell people in this book? This is a terrific book. I, I recommend it to people. It, it's, it, you, you've dealt with some very substantial issues. Tell us about some of them. Well, the thing that I, I, the book starts with talks about the, the fact that we're in a really, really difficult time. And we, have, we have so many demands in our lives in every area. And, so, and yet we don't look at the assumptions that are underneath uh, our, our lives. You know, what, what is it that causes us to do what we do? Mm -hmm. So I examine the assumptions about is business related, you know, what is business relative to God? And then I get into the story of if, since God is interested in business, how do we integrate our business life into right. our relationship with God? And there are some very practical steps in this book, leaving people with the idea at the very end, just like in any seminar, when you leave from a seminar, if you don't write down one thing you're going to do on Monday morning, uh -huh. then the seminar was not worth your while. So I encourage people to read the book, look at what uh, they need to change. And, and why is it important? Because there's so many benefits mm -hmm. that people ought to have in their life. I mean, when we live disintegrated lives, we live burnout lives. We risk burnout. We lose our families. We lose our relationships. We, we, we lose our way with God. You know, and all these can come back together again if we just take the time to focus on who he is and put him into our business lives. Yeah problem when you first started business, didn't you, that somebody was asking you to do something that you weren't comfortable doing? And you... Well, uh, that happened quite a bit. In fact, when I started the company, I, I went to some venture capitalists and asked them to give me some money. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, we, we'd, we'd like to, but, uh, you know, we, we, love, we, we really love this idea. Uh -huh. uh, the, and I said to them, well, you have to understand that uh, I know you venture guys. You're looking for people who work 70 to 80 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have to tell you, I can't do that. I can only work roughly 40 hours a week. And they looked at me and said, what's wrong with you? you know? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so God comes first. And I went through my priorities. God's first. My wife and children are second. My job's third. And that's all I've got left. Well, they didn't want to give me any money at all <laughs> at that yeah. point. And, uh, and as a result, we ended up building this company on $5,000, a grocery bag of connector parts. We built a $400 million business, and we own most of it because we didn't have to give any to venture capitalists. That's not a bad deal. No, it's not a bad deal. God That's what God has in mind, but it's the miracle of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this book, any of you are interested in business or are you young people just coming, getting ready to graduate from school, The Integrated Life, where does somebody get a copy, Ken, of this excellent book? Uh, it's uh, through CBN.com okay. or uh, from uh, Living stones or go to Amazon. It's, on, it's available on Amazon. Yes. The Integrated Life, Ken Eldred. It is a tremendous book, very practical, very exciting. If you're interested in business, this is the way to, to see it. A man who has been there, done this, and came out of it very successful. Well, we leave you with these words from Jeremiah 33, 6. I will heal my people and we'll let them enjoy abundant peace and security. Again, our thanks to Ken Eldred and Ashley Judd for their tremendous presentation. And Lord willing, we'll be back at this same time on the 700 Club, so we see you then. Bye-bye. Fantastic, my brother. Tomorrow, we play our trump card. I'm very truthful. may not be politically correct, but it is truthful. David Brody sits down with the Donald to ask him about his possible run for president. If I wasn't serious, I wouldn't be sitting with you, to be honest with you. And his message to evangelicals. I think that they want to get somebody in that's going to win, and perhaps they look at me as somebody that can win. On tomorrow's 700 Club. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. 
Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy.